Um, hi folks, uh, we're joined today with uh, Pedro uh, Steves. He is the managing partner of Africa Monitor from Lisbon, Portugal. Uh, Pedro is an expert on the Capo Legado insurgency and um, Africa Monitor has also recently published a report on Capo Legado. So yes, hi Pedro, how are you doing? Hello, how are you doing? Thanks. Uh, thank you for uh, the invitation. Sure. Uh, before we begin, would you like to um, talk a bit about what African Monitor does or the um, report you recently published? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, we are um, uh, a producer, uh, we produce intelligence for already many, many years, <clears throat> uh, since the 80s, basically. So when we started following uh, mostly the Portuguese speaking countries uh, in Africa, uh, many of those countries were still in uh, in a civil war, like Angola or like Mozambique. So um, we have been following all the main topics. We don't follow the media agenda uh, normally. Uh, we follow. We have our own priorities and our own uh, agenda. So we do that through uh, sources that we have uh, in all those countries, uh, contacts. You know all the means that we can use to to produce some intelligence. And of course, uh, Mozambique is getting much more important than before for the good and also the bad reasons. And Cap Delgado conflict is one of the bad reasons that uh, are now uh, you know, calling for attention on, on Mozambique. Uh, the good news were the big investments on gas that could eventually change uh, the, the country, but uh, I mean, Let's see what happens. Right now, things are moving uh, as planned, you know, with some delays. Apparently, the delays don't not, have nothing to do with the, with the, with the gas, with the, the conflict. Uh, but there's a risk there and the pretexts that may affect all the investments that are going on there. Okay, sure. So, um, with today's interview, I thought we could start with uh, a, a bit of the beginning, um, a, a bit of the, uh, the history of the area and uh, Africa monitors uh, sort of knowledge on the history of the, of the area with the Muslim. I remember uh, you gave a, a webinar with uh, Chatham House Africa and you said 54% of the area is actually Muslim. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's necessarily uh, common knowledge. So how um, entrenched is uh, the Muslim society in Capo Delgado, in your opinion? The um, Capo Delgado is mostly uh, composed by uh, a Muslim population. Um, so I think that when we approach the Capo Delgado situation, we have to uh, somehow find the differences between Capo Delgado and the other provinces. Because if we speak on uh, the deficiencies on state policies or public policies in general. It happens in Cap Delgado, it happens also in, in most of the Mozambican provinces, if not all the Mozambican provinces. Um, so what distinguishes Cap Delgado is uh, the fact that there is a huge, um, uh, a vast majority of Muslim uh, population. Uh, so because of that, they are more close to um, eventual, more close or more, more permissible to um, radical ideas. Uh, there's also all the young men, all the young people there that are not you know, working, they don't have a job, they don't have a, a, you know, perspectives on what to do in the future. Um, and also there are some ethnical rivalries that helps, that help to um, use those ethnic rivalries by the uh, jihadist movement that is being uh, developed there for the last uh, at least 10 years. Um, that ethnic uh, tensions, those ethnic uh, tensions uh, have a lot to do with the, the, with the 
um, real weight of one ethnic group, which is the Macron group, that um, have uh, political influence. Um, although if they are a, a minority in the province, and really uh, um, they have not added anything specific to the, the province. So, so there, there is a tension that was already growing for the last uh, years. And apparently that tensions between the ethnic uh, traditional groups and Macron group. And as you know, uh, Macron have now a couple of um, important political figures in, uh, in Mozambique, including the president. So that factor is being also used by the jihadist groups to um, have more support from the population to uh, promote, um, I would say, uh, a more conscious um, stance from the population in order to revolt themselves against the injustices that are, that are going there. Uh, and a lot, it has to do with Macron, the ethnic group. So um, that, uh, if we look at the, at the economics, um, we, don't, um, we don't find you know, huge differences between development, uh, or at least in, in, in statistical terms, between uh, population in uh, the, 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 the level of uh, living at the standard, the standard living standards from uh, Cap Delgado population, if we compare with the others, you know there are not huge differences, but there are some interesting um, factors. Uh, for example, I noticed recently um, a study uh, made by the international, or at least sponsored by the international. Uh, labor organization and uh, uh, the CTA, which is the, the, the company's federation in, in Mozambique, on the, um, on the, it was, uh, they, they, were, they were asking uh, to people what, uh, what did they think about uh, the way the state was promoting economic development and supporting companies and so on and so forth. And in fact, um, when they 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 ask to uh, uh, their opinions of uh, the companies in Cabo Delgado, the Mozambican companies in Cabo Delgado, the level of discontent of and deception and, and was much higher than the ones in uh, in, in other provinces. Um, I don't have the, the numbers now, but it seems that. Um, uh, there is a, a growing lack of hope from mostly uh, on the Mozambican state. They feel that they are abandoned. And now with the, all the investments that are going there, the gas up in Cap Delgado, in Palma, uh, the, the gap seems to be growing between what is the, the province de development in terms of uh, gas and the lack of perspectives uh, from the, the youngsters in Cap Delgado. And that also explains <clears throat> the fact that uh, all these armed groups are composed mostly by Mozambicans. Even if you can find, if you can find some, um, you know, Ugandans and some Tanzanians and some, you know, other, other people there, other nationalities there, mostly it is as, as far as we could uh, Notice mostly it is a domestic uh, issue, not not an international issue. Okay, sure. You've asked and you've uh, answered a lot of questions there that I had, which is great. Um, so uh, going back on what you said there, you uh, mentioned the two ethnic groups that um, are sort of against each other. Um, sure, you have that rivalry, but I. How would you guys say that has has led to such um, extreme violence? Yes, it is. Uh, that was not um, that was not the reason why uh, the violence emerged. The, as far as we know, uh, the, viol the violence emerged just like it emerged in other countries. It started with 
you know, proselytism. So people come and start to create an alternative way of looking into Islam. Radicalization, they start to rad radicalize uh, mostly young people uh, and it happened el elsewhere, so this is not that original. And from, the, from radicalization to jihad, what they call jihad, so to arm uh, conflict and arms struggle, it's a small step. Um, and um, that step was, um, was more to do with radicalization than with the ethnic tensions. The ethnic tensions help um, recruitment somehow because the, the, the unsatisfaction is there already. It's there on the lack of perspectives, is there on the ethnic rivalries, is there on you know, many other issues, social issues. Um, but the decision or the, the moment where they started to took uh, the, 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 the moment when they started to fight and not just uh, talk, that was the key issue here in Cap Delgado. And that is not uh, that, uh, you know, hard. It happened in so many other countries. Um, if we look at the equipment and arms and guns and uh, the way they dress, uh, it is all, everything very unsophisticated. It, it is everything very... Uh, most, most of, the, of the guns that uh, are being found in the hands of uh, jihadists are guns used by um, the military, the Mozambican military. So it seems that they were you know, stolen. They kept the, 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 the guns after the attacks. The attacks. Uh, so it's not that we, we haven't seen. There, is, there was already a couple of uh, you know, small signs that there might be some equipment and guns that come from the Tanzanian border. And here, I think that Tanzanian border is a key issue in all this conflict. Um, but it's not, it's, not, uh, it's not that important in the conflict. The conflict is basically composed by people from there, uh, helped with some, you know, you know, I would say chiefs, uh, some ads that are coming from other countries. But uh, all the equipments are stolen, uh, uh, are from the armed forces stolen or from the police stolen. Uh, there was always, always uh, some issues. For example, when the PMC Wagner was there, they were complaining that they didn't, knew or they didn't know already who was the enemy because they were dressing just like the military, the Mozambican militaries. So all, even the, the, the what they wear is stolen from the military. So this is, this is a diff and, and all this is, all this is a, is a difficult, uh, it's more difficult to fight a guerrilla uh, conflict than, um, uh, as you know, than a secular conflict. And it is going on that way. Even worse now, it seems that populations are starting to complain more and more uh, from the way that the military, the Mozambican military are behaving in, um, in Cap Delgado. So uh, when they recover some of the villages that were uh, taken by the jihadists, uh, it seems that the military act almost like if they were the jihadists themselves in terms of robberies, in terms of the way they approach people. And these may help the jihadists to survive uh, in based on the way that uh, the population are starting to uh, feel closer to them than before. Um, what I feel still, what I feel a little bit odd is that some of the um, very violent and, and I would say irrational attacks from the jihadists still go on uh, in, term, in, in certain parts of um, of Cap Delgado. So in, in some parts, they take the villages and they don't kill civilians. In other parts, they take the villages and they kill and they do everything that we have uh, we already, uh, we have been seen in, in, in photographs and films. Um, a very violent way of acting. And 
this also may um, tell us that they are not that coordinated uh, because some groups have a certain modus operandi and other groups have now a, a modus operandi much more close to the populations. So something is wrong here. The coordination and the way that sometimes we look at those conflicts as a single body may not be happening in Mozambique. Okay, sure. Um, talking about if they're a single body or not, and um, as well as external factors, how, how much um, externally do you think is going on that's um, providing the pressure and the radicalism and perhaps, like you said, the problem with the Tanzanian border? Uh, what, what external factors are, are key here that are, that are sort of at play? It's, it's, it's one of the difficult uh, topics here. As you know, there are many people, analysts, that are saying that um, this is all oriented by ISIS, by Daesh. Uh, they have created like a sub-organization in that area. Uh, um, is kept. Um, but it is strange that the first time ISIS emerged was already two years after the conflict started. Um, it was the first public position from ISIS on the conflict. So something is wrong here because if it was a process oriented by ISIS, then they would emerge sooner. So what we feel, and we have uh, been you know, covering also that area in, in Africa Monitor, is that um, the conflict started in a more or less anarchic way uh, through people that radicalized uh, youngsters in Cap Delgado. Um, they started to um, they have decided to take action. And as they started to become famous, I would say, public, um, then ISIS propaganda assumed that cause as their own cause. And that helps everyone because if that helps uh, ISIS, because they are now present in Mozambique, that also helps, helps the jihadists in, uh, in Mozambique because they feel that they have know, a cause, and they are part of an international cause. Um, and that is the situation right now. I know that there are analysts that consider that all this is a work, all, all this uh, conflict, it's, it's oriented in the work of ISIS. It is now um, being uh, assumed by ISIS propaganda, but that, that doesn't mean that they are, you know, um, on the basis of the conflict or, or, or that they even know what is going on there because it is very often to um, look at the ISIS um, public positions, communiques and things like that, and the facts are not uh, correct. When they, they, they miss the right, um, the names of the villages, uh, they don't know, sometimes they miss the, local, the, 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 the geography, um, they have recently made um, a, state, a statement in, uh, in the 2nd of July where it seems a little bit like a, an analysis. It's not really, it's not really um, a, a, a plan for the groups to act, but it's more or less an analysis uh, that they state that uh, uh, now they have to, we have to, uh, uh, we have to fight the injustice of what is going on in the gas app, where many multinational companies are, you know, will are, are, are will will gain much money, but the population will not feel any of the effects of that uh, development there. Um, they also mention a little bit the. Um, the regional uh, issue here, I mean, uh, the fact that uh, if any of the neighbors will get himself involved in the conflict, they will suffer consequences. But I mean, this is all, this is a little bit uh, um, a, a posteriori, if you understand me. Uh, it is something that comes after what is going on in the field 
and not um, assign to what for the armed groups on what they should do. So it seems that they are a little bit like an ob observers of the scene of the situation. And ISIS has not, we have not seen, you know, um, sophisticated weapons. We have not seen uh, sophisticated tactics. We have not seen uh, bombs, you know, uh, car bombs. Um, some analysts are already saying that um, maybe the conflict will involve in that sense, but till now, nothing, nothing of that is happening. It's still a conflict that basically is, has not involved in, in terms of models operandi from the beginning, uh, from what we have seen in, uh, in late 2000, 2017 and, uh, and 2018. And, and 18. The conflict is more or less, there are more people there, um, there are more people fighting, um, the population is, um, they are starting to use precisely those ethnic tensions on, uh, against the Macont because people, many of them are from there, so they understand well the, the, the tensions between ethnics, the Macont and the other groups, so they are using that, they are saying that they are not some are saying that they are not against the population, they are against the Mozambican state, and that the idea is to establish a caliphate in Cap Darab, which is, which is always the, the, the goal of those, of those movements. So this is the situation now. We haven't seen, so basically to answer your question, of course we have seen now the interest of ISIS and, and the utility of, from ISIS to assume that the conflict is also their own conflict in terms of propaganda. In the field, we haven't seen anything that may prove that the ISIS is, is there or is supporting there with money or with guns or with any, or with tactics that uh, the young groups that are in Qatar have. Okay, sure. So if, if ISIS isn't really a factor there right now, um, it, would, it would be wrong to say that those who are against the state and those who are um, doing the killing are separate in any way. Or uh, just, what, sorry? Those who are um, against the state and those who are doing the indiscriminate killings, would, would you be fair to say that it's still the same group? Yes, that's, that's one uh, key question. Um, there are different um, armed groups according to the region. Sometimes they attack and they kill everyone and they destroy everyone, every, every house and they burn everything. In other cases, they don't. So the, one of the key issues here is to understand why that is happening. And uh, we don't have the answer yet. Either it is lack of coordination or uh, it may be also the result of um, I would say a, a, a high degree of, of um, autonomy among all the groups, meaning that if any, if each group has um, one leader and that leader decides what to do, uh, that means that we are not looking into um, logical and coordinated movement in Cap Delgado, but we are looking into several different cells that each one has its own leader and uh, has its own uh, tactics and models apparently, which turns the conflict even more anarchic than it is already. Uh, and it is a difficult, uh, it, is, it is even more difficult because imagine that, and it, this, is, this is not, this is something that could happen, but apparently it, it will not happen. But imagine that there was a political sign from the government in order to offer, um, you know, an amnesty or something like that to uh, the jihadists. Probably you won't have one single negotiator or one single answer. We will have uh, maybe 20 or 30 different uh, people to whom you have to talk to. And that turns the, the, the resolution of the conflict even more difficult. Sure. Um, on that point, um, I remember you saying in a previous webinar and um, uh, what we're reporting is that their tactics are shifting to recruiting and they are, their modus operandi is getting a bit more developed. 
Um, I think there's something you'd agree on. Um, so so the, the terms of recruitment, they, uh, is, that the, is that their main modus operandi right now? Do you think, do you think they're just trying to uh, recruit more people? Um, what do you think their, their latest objectives are? Um, from, from what we have noticed, um, they are recruiting more people or more people are voluntary, voluntarily um, joining the groups. Um, and that is a fact because um, in recent operations, um, namely in Musimbo da Praia, uh, Kisanga, um, when they approached Pemba, <clears throat> like uh, one and a half months ago, there was already a, a significant number of, um, of, uh, of jihadists there. So there are more people there. Um, we have also noticed from some images that there are also now women involved in, in the fightings, which was not the case in the beginning. Um, all their, um, all their, um, you know, cars or uh, equipments are still more or less uh, follows the same pattern as as it as uh, from the beginning. So it is basically what we have seen is basically, you know, motorcycles and cars stolen from the population or stolen from the military. Um, guns the same. They still use, you know. Um, you know, knives and things like that. So not, not everything is sophisticated, on the contrary. Um, so apparently the groups are becoming bigger. Um, mostly, I believe that uh, composed by people that are from Cabo Delgado and not, not coming from the outside uh, of Mozambique. Um, and, they are, and they are approaching a more guerrilla um, tactic, tactics in terms of they are becoming more sympathetic with the population. They are starting to um, have a political message, and this um, this last um, this last uh, communique from uh, from uh, ISIS, recent one, the, the one from the second of July, already um, somehow. It it uh, it uh, shows what is going on in the ground. So the idea it seems to uh, have the populations on their side um, to um, to move to turn the populations against the Macond, uh, which they feel are the state representatives in Cap Delgado. Uh, starting to put more attention on uh, the gas hub. Um, of course, we know that the fact that the gas hub is in Cap Delgado gave uh, publicity that was not possible to exist uh, if the gas hub was not there. So it is a very important from, from the beginning. But in fact, the fact that they are now saying that they will attack also uh, the gas hub and and uh, and everything else related with with the gas investments there, it's also a critical. Uh, it's also a critical uh, point um, because even if it is interesting because there was a recent attack in um, uh, in the last day of June, I think, end of June, where um, eight people, eight employers from um, a company called Phoenix that was, I think it is, it is South African, uh, that, was, that is working with, the, with Total in Cap Delgado. There was, um, an, um, they were ambushed and they were, um, and, and eight at least were killed. I think three are still disappeared. Um, but in the, in, the, um, in the statement from ISIS, I would say three, four days later, there is no reference on that on that attack, and that could be a great opportunity for ISIS, because it was eventually a casual the fact that that car that was attacked was working for Total, but ISIS lost the possibility of um, pushing 
that attack from their side, even if it was casual, and saying that, look, we have shot eight people from uh, working for Total and use that as a propaganda instrument for them. And they didn't. So that somehow also is a little bit, goes on the way that in fact, uh, what they are doing there is not, it has not a direct channel to ISIS propaganda. Um, so we have to separate one thing is ISIS propaganda, another thing what is, is going on there. And what is going on there is now becoming more and more not an anarchic movement, but more a guerrilla war. And, and uh, let's see. So basically, this, the, 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 the final answer is, is, is in the government side, because it depends on how effective they will be in military terms. And also, if they want to um, have a political initiative or not, apparently, no, they won't. They, they will not have. They will choose only the military way. Sure. And now it doesn't necessarily help the government, uh, the Mozambican government, that um, the uh, that ISIS has not picked up on um, these attacks. It would certainly help them in garnering support, I imagine, if they are presented with an external threat, or at least it seems as though they have an external threat upon them. But uh, that doesn't seem to be the case. It does seem to be internal. And um, going on to the government, uh, they've certainly had their own role in, I would say, uh, causing or at least seeing the emergence of this violent extremism. Uh, in what way, sorry? Um, at, least, at least socially, as you say, that um, they are part of an ethnic group that is sort of at rivalries. And then politically, like you say, that they are almost apolitical. They don't want to be um, politically involved in um, perhaps coming to some sort of resolution with this group. And um, certainly the militarization, they taking a very uh, hard military approach, it seems. So, um, yes, I, I would say, well, do you agree with that, that um, with, with those statements? Yes, uh, um, the, the government is, um, I think they are putting everything they have on in Kabul. Um, they are sending, you know, many people to their, to Kabul. They are um, having the support of uh, the of DAC, of DA, DAG, the, the PMC, the South African PMC. So they are having support, aerial support. Um, but I think that they are also, so uh, the problem is that all the, the, the state ran away from Cap Delgad. So Cap Delgad is empty right now. Um, the municipal uh, uh, authorities ran away. So no one is there, no, the, the, the health centers are closed, municipal uh, assemblies and council, uh, councils are closed, so authorities are not there anymore. Um, so when the military arrive in Cap Delgado, it's like uh, an exception zone, they do whatever they want to do, no one controls them, and the populations are running away, not just from the jihadists, but also from the military. Um, also, the effectiveness of the military has been very fragile from the beginning, since the beginning. Uh, in the first, uh, in the beginning, they were not even there. Then uh, they were there in small um, companies, uh, small groups, but um, they were not effective because they only act after the attacks and the attacks were already making all the damages and it was like um, a posteriori approach and now they are there more massively but um, uh, for example if they recover a village there are reports that say that uh, when the jihadists return they run away the military run away uh, so there are the moral is very low there are apparently also some um, lack of coordination and even conflict between um, the police, the, the, inter, the rapid intervention unit from the police, which is also in Cap Delgado, and the military, um, the, the, the armed forces themselves. 
So there is no coordination between them. There is apparently also some rivalry and the military are starting to, the military top ranks are starting also to complain uh, about the role of the police. They, sh they say that the main role should be the role uh, performed by the armed forces and not so much by the police. So there is also that tension now between police and military let's let's see how will that affect um the, the situations in Cabo, the situation in Cabo Delgado but i think that Mozambique already realized that they cannot control the situation without uh, regional help um so they are they what they are selling and that is true in fact is that if if the conflict is not controlled soon it may spread and or, or at least it may affect other countries in the region, namely Tanzania, um, <clears throat> and even eventually South Africa. Well, I, I think it's too far, and I think it's, it's a very difficult, a different uh, situation. But I would consider that Tanzania is probably very worried with the situation in Cabo Delgado. What Tanzanians did was to close the border and to control the border, but to prevent anyone to enter to from Mozambique to Tanzania, not the other way. So the main issue here is to understand if the border in from Tanzania to Mozambique is, is still open or not. They say it's not open, but in fact, there are still some Tanzanians that apparently are coming from uh, to Cap Delgado, arriving in Cap Delgado. There are a couple of uh, you know, equipments and a couple of guns that apparently didn't exist in don't exist in the armed, Mozambican armed forces, so they, they had to come from somewhere, eventually from Tanzania. Um, so Tanzania is the key, I think it's a key player here. Uh, South Africa is also a key player in political terms because we know the importance of South Africa in SADC. So I think that ACDC has to take a, a position on Cap Delgado very soon, whether if they it will create a regional, I would say, peace enforcement uh, group or not, that's still open. That is certainly what Mozambique wants and also with support of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe has been supporting uh, Mozambique on that, on that position. But the answer is, most, is mostly in, in South Africa, Tanzania, of course. Sure. But now I remember you um, questioning uh, what type of support SADC could provide. Now, um, if we go through the countries, uh, you started talking about South Africa, uh, questioning what sort of um, assistance they could provide. And um, what, what do you see them providing? Okay. Or the others? Um, or, or all of them. Mm. I mean, it's it's difficult to say that because, for example, with Tanzania, all the agreements, all the security agreements are are uh, in place. So this is mostly a political uh, decision from Tanzania. Uh, South Africa, it seems that it already has considered the possibility of having some role on supporting Mozambique, but uh, apparently no decision was taken. As you know, uh, the decision has to go through different uh, stages in, in, in South Africa, Parliament and so on, so forth. So it is, it is not something that can be done from one day to the other and time is running. Um, and, uh, but I think that uh, there are also issues on, uh, on whether South Africa has now the necessary military means to use in, um, in uh, Mozambique, in Cap Delgado, or who is going to pay that uh, law, that peace enforcement uh, force eventually. Um, and that is something that is open, who's going, because as you know, no one's, everything, everyone says yes often, but then in, in, in the last moment, no one wants to pay that. And Mozambique has no possibility, I think, to pay to pay for, for such uh, for such force. Uh, in bilateral terms, there is also now a, a different, a more open, um, uh, a 
more open possibility from uh, the US to help um, eventually on normally on training and some equipment. The same with the United Kingdom. I'm sure that France will have a key role, but I think that France will be focused on the total interests, uh, total uh, in not not in the global situation in Cap Um And the, we know that there were already many uh, proposals from different countries to support Mozambique, not with money, but with training and eventually with some equipment. But till now, anything has moved uh, because, as you know, um, there is still a tension between the old allies of Mozambique and the new allies of Mozambique. And the old allies, in the old allies, you find Russia, you find eventually Ch China. Uh, in the new allies, you find uh, the US, the UK, uh, France. Uh, and so it is difficult to because they are also divided, it is, difficult, it is difficult for them to have a decision, a very short-term decision on this. So I think that they will prefer a regional solution because it's much less politically sensitive than the other one. So, but um, how, how real do you think the um, internal solution is of um, the military being capable of handling it, considering they're sort of fighting their own people and the perhaps needs to be a de-radicalization movement that, as far as we can tell, isn't going on. Um, yeah. How much? I, I lost last part. Sure. I was saying that um, how capable do you think the internal response by the military is of handling the situation, considering that perhaps it needs to be a de-radicalization um, movement that doesn't seem to be going on presently. Yes, uh, that is the key. That is the key topic for the future of the conflict. And for that, um, Mozambique will need all the NGOs that they can gather, and all the international support uh, to rebuild what has been destroyed in Cap Delgado to rebuild uh, uh, health, education, infrastructures, uh, schools, uh, training schools. Um, and, and that is the key issue in the future for Cap de Rad. And that is the only way they can somehow legitimize uh, state there, which is not being, which apparently didn't happen for the last uh, years. So they have to rebuild even the state images, image in, 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 the, in, the, in the province. But for that, they will have to uh, stabilize the region because NGOs, they won't risk to send people to uh, Cap Delgado in a situation like this one. The, the same with the church, namely the Catholic church. They have an, an important role in the, in the region, in the province, but they have been attacked already. So they, they, they run away. They had to run away. They are now in Pemba. The number of refugees is growing uh, in a very dramatic way. Um, villages like Musimba, Musimba da Praia, da Praia Kisanga, um, uh, Ibu are, are empty because people run away. The organizations run away. State run away. And it seems that is also one of the goals of, from the Jihadists is to empty the province so they can uh, somehow rebuild the province, Cabo Delgado province, on their own, under their own rules, and uh, under their own uh, system of governance, which is a dream eventually, till now it's only a dream, but slowly they are managing at least to destroy uh, the Mozambican state presence, uh, and, and they are using some symbols to state that they are in control of some parts of and some areas of the of the province. I think that they are also now trying to control certain areas. And eventually, if they manage to control one area, um, they can, from there, uh, start to build their own system of governance. 
and that is the danger. So it is important for the Mozambicans not, not to let them control uh, any area in Cabo Delgado. If they start, if they allow that, it is very difficult then it will take much more time uh, to recover the province and to rebuild the province. Sure. Now, uh, you're very right in saying that um, you, you don't want them to have control over these towns, cities, uh, regions, but you're saying that um, these, these regions are being emptied out. So to what extent is, um, are these regions uh, uh, empty? The, they are, uh, <clears throat> we don't have numbers, but um, many, many, I would say, uh, hundreds of villages, small villages around the um, Kisanga area, the Kisanga district, Mosimbo da Praia district, Muidum district are empty. Um, people run away from there. Either they are in, um, most, most of them are uh, in, around Pemba, uh, temporarily there. So they're now refugees. Um, and the fact that Musimo da Praia, th that those, all those villages are empty, uh, gives the idea to the, G the, 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 the sense to the geodists that they are winning. Uh, because I think that um, when they look at when we look at Cabo Delgado right now, I think that a plan of uh, now a plan of rebuild all the province is needed for the future. Um, also, they will have to take care of all the refugees to prepare also their return to the villages. That means to rebuild the villages, their houses, the health uh, system, uh, education, schools. So we are we are we are assisting to uh, you know things that we already saw in other parts of uh, of Africa and, and elsewhere, mostly elsewhere. If we look at um, you know, countries like Syria or countries like uh, Afghanistan, we have seen the effects of all these conflicts there. So Mozambicans have to, and they are somehow under pressure in terms of the time they have because the level of destruction is becoming much more dramatic than um, people thought in the beginning. Uh, even schools, for example, uh, professional schools are destroyed. Um, not just, you know, not also private, uh, private uh, ventures are, are becoming uh, affected. Um, companies are uh, are leaving Cap Delgado uh, gradually. Not all Cap Delgado, but but companies in Musimbo da Praia or Kisanga and other regions are leaving it. And so everything is in seems to be in Pemba, and Pemba it looks like it's becoming like uh, the last resist, the last ebb of the Mozambican state in Cap Delgado, and that is um, Pemba and Palma, of course. Uh, and that is dramatic because we are we are looking into a, a, a desert area where where no one lives there anymore. So it's in fair to say that uh, the insurgency does in fact have territory. I think it's their goal. It's their goal. It's to um, <clears throat> it's to control to control a part of the territory. The start controlling some parts. We have seen that in other countries, for example, give the example of um, uh, Algeria. Uh, so already some years ago, they also started with that uh, modus operandi and they, and in the end, they are already controlling what they called Katibat, which is small, small um, liberated territories, areas. And I think that it may become one of the goals of the jihadists because uh, that is their that is their 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 aim their their goal. It's to start with the control from controlling small spaces and growing and growing uh, uh, gradually to the control of the, of most of the province. Um, let's see what happens in Pemba. 
what happens in Palma. Right now, apparently, Palma is, is secured. Um, the same happens with Pemba. They tried to uh, take Pemba, uh, as I said, one off, one off a month ago, more or less, when the, uh, the AG, the, 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 the PMC, started to, um, to fight. Uh, they, were already, they, were already, uh, they were already surrounding Pemba. Um, so I think that the, this is this is the the way that they want to go. It's to control small parts and moving to bigger areas, and uh, for that Mozambique has to run fast and faster than than they have been uh, running till now. They have to move faster and they have to get more support and they have to get and then when the situation is enough has enough stability, then the NGOs and all the uh, the organizations that they will need to rebuild the province will come. Before that, they won't. Okay. Uh, last few uh, questions, short questions here. Um, so now you're right. So they, um, they, they are gaining this sort of territory. They um, have gone up against a state that is sort of not adequate, adequately dealing with the uh, situation. And now on top of that, I hear... Uh, you saying that PMCs have expressed an unwillingness to work with the Mozambican um, military or, or, or government. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that a report coming out of uh, Africa Monitor? Yes. Yes, also. Uh, first of all, there were problems with the Wagner uh, company, with the Wagner, the Russians that were there. There were troubles in many ways. Um, they complained that um, when they were um, in the ground, um, there were um, <clears throat> they didn't know if uh, the people that were coming from the other side were, were military of Jidis because they were dressed in exactly the same way. So there, there was that problem. Uh, in technical terms, they were they were also complaining about the conditions where they were in terms of accommodations. So they felt that all the conditions that were given to them were not appropriate. They could not sleep. You know. um, and finally, in, in operational terms, they didn't have enough information and, and organized information from the Mozambican uh, militaries so they, could, um, so they could act in a more effective way, which they didn't. And as you know, there, there were casualties among Wagner. And apparently the same already happened with um, not eventually in the same degree, but uh, there were already signs of some um, lack of confidence between uh, uh, the DAG uh, PMC and uh, the Mozambican military. Um, it is a little bit different from Wagner because Wagner people were in the ground and the, until, as far as we know, Doug, it is, um, it is mostly providing um, aerial support. So it's, they are, it's safer than, than being in the ground, but there is still problems. And, um, and uh, there, was or, there was already apparently a strike from some of the, 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 the DAG um, uh, company and some pilots uh, decided to strike because they were not happy with the situation there. And they were complaining also about lack of security from them. Um, so there is always trouble um, between the military, the Mozambican military and the PMC. Let's see if till now, apparently PMC is already having more, it's more stabilized now. There is some operational problems because every time they have to um, fill up their um, helicopters or, uh, or uh, other devices, they have to go to Pemba so every time they have to go to Pema, there's a, a logistical problem and they take a lot of time to get back to the areas where they are. So there are always some problems in terms of um, in Cap Delgado that difficult, not just um, the military that are there, but also the PMC performance there. So let's see what happens now. Uh, uh, it depends a lot on on the developments of uh, of the conflict in the, in the next weeks because as you know there are many 
PMCs that are very interested on uh, on moving also into Cap Delgado, but as you know, it's an, it's expensive, and politically, it's not easy to have you know uh, five or six PMCs in Cap Delgado at the same time, uh, and even them they may may not want to 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 be there with other with other PMCs. So all is in the open um, till, till now, as you know. Um, most of the support from the PMC, the main PMC there is, is uh, aerial support. Uh, and what I think it is needed from now is to have more people in the ground and more organized people in the ground. And that will may only happen with, uh, with uh, some regional support or some international support, not only with Mozambican and militaries. That will be, that has proven that is not enough. So. That's it. Okay, thank you. Um, that pretty much does it from our side. Uh, I, I did maybe want to go back to just uh, their equipment. Um, it, it does seem that they're capturing a lot of military hardware at the moment. And um, where, would, where would you say they're getting most of their equipment from? You mentioned civilians. Um, I remember you saying something about boats. Uh, do, they have, yeah. do they have boats now as well? Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, they they stole. Um, they are stealing stealing um, you know many boats from the civilians. Uh, they took um, once the, the naval what they well the, the naval military base, which is not a big one but it's a small one in Mosimbo da Praia. But they didn't took any boat because there were some reports in the beginning that they had took a couple of military boats. Apparently that didn't happen. But they are using uh, civilian boats. They are stealing it. And they are using it to um, to move um, by sea uh, to transport themselves and and to get to some islands that they are already using uh, as a support base or to attack or whatever. Um, all all most of the motorcycles that uh, are are apparently motorcycles stolen from the population. Um, there are a couple of them that they had. Um, uh, Tanzanian plate, uh, so they, are, they came from Tanzania. We don't know if they were already in Mozambique of, or if they were, if they, would, if they were sent from Tanzania to Mozambique. Maybe they were, they were already there. Um, on guns and um, equipment, um, what we have seen, with the exception of one case seen or re reports that we have been uh, receiving is that uh, most of the guns are guns that are also used by the military armed forces um, from Mozambique. So there, there is not, at least till now, any arms trafficking from other countries to the jihadists in, uh, in Cap Delgado. Um, what, uh, there was a, when, one gun that was found there. It, it is not used by uh, the military uh, in Mozambique, so it might have been uh, trafficked from Tanzania to issue here. And without the Tanzanian um, support, and you know, relations are not as good as they should be. Um, without Tanzanian support, it is difficult to cut um, the possibility of them to receive um, some equipment and or even guns from uh, Tanzanian to from to to, do, to the jihadist groups in 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 Cap Delgado. So this is a key this is a key topic and it is something that has to evolve with bilaterally or within the ACDC. Okay, so sure. what do you think the the chances of um, Tanzania uh, stepping up their involvement are currently low at the moment. Yes, I think that it has to. Um, apparently, the, um, in this, uh, Zimbabwe, we will have, uh, if I'm not wrong, the presidency of uh, SADC in the summer, August maybe. Um, Zimbabwe has been very is is complying a lot with the Mozambican uh, government. Uh, they have close relations, you know, many, they have exchanges between them and things like that. So uh, I think that Zimbabwe may be a good help for Mozambique to convince some of the most renitent partners 
from ICDC to um, become more helpful. Um, and we will see that soon enough, I think. Um, it seems that, uh, that uh, South Africa is a key country here, and I think that the position of South Africa is not clear. But in fact, no one wants to import the problem into their own territory. And that is the key issue. Um, they are afraid that if they get involved in a conflict that is an, a domestic conflict in Mozambique, they will somehow, sooner or later, sooner or later import some of the radical uh, movements into their own uh, territory. As you know, there are already some in Tanzania. They are controlled. They, do, 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 they just don't want to you know, worsen the situation. So everyone is pushing the problem into Mozambique. Let's see if that will uh, change or not in, in the summer, in August eventually. Sure. And now um, uh, closing uh, for my questions, uh, almost a bit of a personal one. Um, Mozambique in the summer gets a huge influx of uh, South Africans and uh, beachgoers and visitors and, and the rest. And um, I'm sure they want to sort of keep the problem, push it north, keep it north. Um, what, what, what do you think and what does Africa Monitor think about the insurgency pushing south, if at all? Is it possible that this, uh, would it happen? I think that um, situations are so different between uh, what is going on in Cabo Delgado and, uh, and the, the South African uh, situation. Uh, as uh, even with other provinces in Mozambique, the situation, the situation is so different that I would consider that uh, I would say a speculation, you know, uh, unless there are signs that uh, some radic Islamic, Islamic uh, um, radicalization, radicalization is emerging in South Africa, which I don't think it's the case. Um, I would say that is a speculation because, in fact, Kadagat situation is different from all the other, from South African situation, from uh, even the southern provinces of Mozambique. Um, and I wouldn't uh, find that very plausible in the short term, surely. Sure. Okay. Well, thank you for your time, Pedro. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Any closing remarks? No, I think uh, Africa Monitor will continue to follow the situation. As you know, it's, it has become a very sensitive uh, topic. Um, I think that we haven't mentioned the position of the of the oil company of the gas companies in Cabo They are they are a key player also. I think they will have um, um, they will have um, an important role on the way that the conflict will evolve. Um, and mostly on, it is important to know if they are if they are going to support in a more decisive way uh, the Mozambican um, state on on the conflict in Cadegado. If they will keep, um, you know, more concerned with their own projects and their own territory in uh, in Palma. So this is also um, a key topic, and, and I think that uh, things have to move on fast because, as I told you, uh, time reigns against uh, Cabo Delgado populations and, and runs against Mozambique itself. So new events have to take, uh, to take place very soon. Sure. Okay. Well, thank you, Pedro. That was a... Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you. Cheers. Stop recording it, yeah.